Okay, so shall we start talking about these movies and pretend that we haven't just been talking about them for three hours? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, hi, this is Mary. And Miranda. And this is Bird Barf again Bird Barf! for the first time in like a hundred years. We don't have Tina because she said that she didn't think she could contribute. But, um, so for this special Bird Barf, of course we're back because it's Halloween uh, coming up. And of course, that means that we have to start talking about horror movies. And Miranda had an excellent idea. <laughs> oh, is it? Well, it started off as of more of just like a anger. Of course, I read an article and got <laughs> angry, as I often do. Um, and then came to you and was like, let's be angry about this and <laughs> record a podcast. <laughs> So basically, because in addition to Halloween, we also have, it's it's the season for people putting out their lists of best horror movies. And usually, uh, I disagree with most things, but that's because I'm honorary and full of complaints all of the time. <laughs> but uh, so we were going through different lists and one that Miranda, and again, let's, we're not necessarily making fun of the taste of people who've put this together. It's just, these aren't the kinds of movies we'd recommend necessarily. So yeah. and, and, uh, and some of them too, I would go as far as to say that some of these movies either aren't really horror, so I don't yeah. think they should be on the list, or they're just not, there are better ones, um, you know, I think that are overlooked, because as we'll see, one of the lists that I found it doesn't appear to be based on anything other than, like, a Metacritic rating, yeah. which you know, I don't think it's a, a fair metric, uh, right. especially when it comes to horror. It's, horror is a lot, I don't know, anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's, you know, it's, it's a personal thing. Like, the idea of what you're frightened by is very personal. So if we read off a movie and we're like, no, we don't, we can't believe this is on there, and you're just like, but it's my favorite, sorry, <laughs> that's your favorite, and, who cares? And, and you can tell us, too. I mean, yeah. you know, if you want to be academic about it, tell us why you disagree and why you think it's great. Because some of these movies were, we, we don't always agree yeah. on movies either. Like, there are some movies that I really enjoy where Mary is like, no, that didn't do it for me. <laughs> and before we started recording, uh, one that we mentioned, which we probably won't actually talk about because it's on no list, uh, is Zombie Strippers. <laughs> I found it somewhat entertaining. Mary didn't like it. So we no. don't even agree together, no, together. on we certain things. But, but there are some where we're both like, what? No, how can anyone like this? So Yeah. Um, and I think today we're going to do, that. We uh, Miranda found a list. It's the 60 best horror movies streaming on Netflix for fall 2016. Um, it's from Paste. Uh, by Jim Vorl, and Jim Vorl had a really hard time, because there are a bunch of really mediocre horror movies on Netflix, and so he basically tried to pull 60 that he thought were the best. Naturally, I have an entire list of ones that I found it egregious that he skipped. <laughs> but... <laughs> uh, and if you check out this list, too, it, it even was literally just updated this morning. So yeah. it seems like, you know, as Netflix keeps adding or removing movies throughout the month, as they often do, yeah. uh, he's actually, or, or somebody, uh, is updating the list. So, you know, that's, that's at least cool. So, yeah. And he points out that, like, the list, uh, he says in here, the lowest ranked films are the, quote, fun, bad, variety, flawed, but enjoyable for one reason or another. The highest ranked films are more like classics, which you can kind of see, although I'm kind of, the skew of it is a bit odd. So we'll go through and take a look. Yeah. Um, okay. So we figured we'd start with 60, which is the lowest of the list, and keep <laughs> going. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I have nothing to say about several of these. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in full disclosure, you know, we have not seen every movie on this list. No. So, uh, you know, frankly, because some of these are movies that I would never choose to watch. <laughs> so, I don't really view this as a challenge. This is just kind of like, here's a list. <laughs> not, I have exactly. two um, Okay, so I, my comments start with number 58. So did you want to say anything about the other ones? Uh... No, go ahead. Go ahead with. I mean, I think we can skip Zombievers. Uh. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know, ABCs of Death, whatever. Um, but yeah, so they've got fifty-eight. They have Dark Skies, which is an alien movie, and which I thought 
was not fun. I thought it was really annoying. I actually haven't seen that one, uh, so I have really no comments on it. I'm not big into alien. Uh, I mean, I like some alien movies, yeah. but I, I don't seek out a lot of, like, abduction uh, movies like that. Uh, but I do see that J.K. Simmons is in it, and I do like him. Was he yeah. good at least? I don't, I think he's only in it very few. The thing is, there's a child in this movie. And children are like, I can't. I hate kids and hormones. <laughs> I hate them. I can't. I just can't stand it. Which, of course, makes it interesting that I'm about to protest where Children of the Corn is in this list. But, like... <laughs> I know, I was just going to say, like, there are some movies that we both agree are awesome and do have kids in them, though. Yeah, there's sometimes they're fine. Village of the Damned, which is not on this list is all children and they're the most terrifying things I've ever seen but it's like <laughs> in general it's just the way kids are portrayed in these movies is really annoying and I think Dark Skies has that problem uh, and like you yeah. don't like the parents and like no one's believing anybody and it's one of those things where it's like oh that's so dumb that's fair that's fair uh okay what should we do next um I mean right below that we've talked about this a little bit um, before is bit number 57 is dead silence mm -hmm. um which i remember seeing in theaters when it came out mm -hmm. uh it's made by the saw guy on uh, you know insidious and conjuring it's it's all the same guy and it was i think like the first movie he did after sort of the explosion of saw oh. um and it's not great so i definitely don't disagree with being number 57 on the list of 60. It's, yeah. it's worth a, a watch. It has some fun moments, but I would, it, you know, I wouldn't compare it to any of his other movies as far as quality. I think they, people almost like did it more for fun. Yeah, um, it's, because obviously, it's like, hokey. Saw, Insidious, The Conjuring mm -hmm. are great, uh, and Dead Silence was just kind of can't be fun, really. It doesn't have Jason Stackhouse yeah. from True Blood in it, so he's, like, the main guy, which always is kind of funny. Um, oh, I see, I don't watch True Blood, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, know him, but, I mean, he, all the acting was pretty. pretty yeah, like, it was so. just kind of silly, like, uh, but, you know, there were some goofy things I thought were pretty interesting. Yeah. And That's, it is one of those kind of cool movies where there's, like, a twist, and then it does make you want to watch it again to be, like, okay, now I gotta, I gotta see, like, did I miss this, or, mm -hmm. you know, did they make it obvious, or did they not make it obvious, and then try to, like, tell you that it was obvious the whole time, so. Yeah. It's, it's good for that, so. Yeah. Um, all right. I have not seen some of these, I keep thinking The Hole is a different movie, because wasn't there a hole yeah. with, like, Kieran Knightley and Lawrence Fox from, like, 2001? It sounds familiar. I thought this was a different movie. Yeah, this as is well. a different I ha one. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything but, about the uh, latest shift or Would You Rather. Oh, didn't you say you liked yeah, Would You Rather? I did like Would You Rather. All right, I'll briefly mention this. And I, I this you is know, 53. As a, a, yeah, as a caveat, like, was it a great horror movie? No. But I, you know, I put it on my list thinking, like, this is going to be awful, but I'll watch it. It'll be, you know, kind of fun. <laughs> Surprisingly good. It's not really original. It is kind of based off of the whole, like, would you rather game that you played as kids, um, yeah. but kind of takes it to the extreme. So uh, they're basically all just, they're all poor people with problems, and this, you know, millionaire invites them. He does this once a year, and it's basically like a battle of, like, you know, would you rather electrocute the person next to you or electrocute yourself and take that pain and you only have like so many seconds oh. to choose <laughs> and he makes makes them do this and then at first you know he just makes them, oh you can leave whenever you want and of course you're watching a horror movie so you know that's not going that's to happen not how that works yeah <laughs> um the ending was uh the ending was definitely predictable but uh britney snow who i think is a pretty good actress um yeah you know, is the lead, so it's worth, it's worth a view. I would definitely recommend it. Again, you're not going to get anything amazing. Yeah. But it, it was pretty fun. Definitely recommend. Maybe I'll try that one. I'm still surprised that Children of the Corn is 52. I mean, it's not a great movie. Yeah. It's super hokey, but it's like, if you're talking about classic stuff, I thought they had some hokier stuff up higher. Yeah, it's definitely a classic. I mean, it's so much, you know, even 
there's been like a, a more recent remake, which was okay. I think it was like mm. a sci-fi remake. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, like I said, it's, I would not even call this, uh, what did they describe it as? Like bad fun or whatever. I would not call it bad fun. I, I mean, I, it's a classic, so. Plus Linda Hamilton's like, in it. <laughs> She's always awesome. Yeah. I, mean, I feel like if you're going to have like, you know, like they have, you know, for example, I think Cujo closer to the top mm. of the list. I mean, yeah. I kind of like Children of the Corn for like, you know, looking at like Stephen King stuff. I kind of like Children of the Corn better uh, personally, but. Yeah, I miss Maximum Overdrive. That's not on this list. It doesn't matter. I do like that they gave you <laughs> both VHS and VHS2 movies that you don't like quite right in a row. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, again, full disclosure, I have not seen VHS2 only because I hated VHS so much. Um, I, I just, I don't, and, and I like anthology movies, so it wasn't even that. Because um, I love, you know, Trick or Treat. And, oh, I love Trick or Treat. You know, Tales from the Dark Side, you know, stuff like that. But, oh, I just, I don't know. Did you see VHS? I just, I couldn't. No. I started and I, and watched, then I, I lost interest really fast. I watched all of it because I kept thinking like, all right, this one kind of sucked, but it's an anthology movie, so the next one will be good. And then the next one wasn't good. And then I was like, okay, well, the next one will be good. And then the next one wasn't good. You know, I just, <laughs> there weren't, Yeah. nothing was surprising. The twists, the twists I didn't think were really jaw-dropping. I, I don't know. And it, but it just, it gets such high praise. Um, and I just, yeah, you know, like some of the directors, you know, we've talked about this movie before, which is not on any of the lists, um, but uh, The House of the Devil, which I think was the Ty West movie. Oh, uh, the jokey one? It wasn't really like jokey, was but it was like, yeah. It's supposed to be like, like seven, it looked, it was films, like 70s yeah. style. Satanism. Uh, yeah, and I mean, it's like, it's not that, like, any of them were bad. I just didn't think they were good. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of that a makes thing. Sense. No, it does. Yeah. Uh, so for as far as VHS two, you know, there are number fifty <laughs> and forty nine respectively on this list. I just I've heard VH two was better, but mm -hmm. I just I didn't want to waste my time because I felt like I wouldn't get the two hours back that I wasted on the first one. So. Yeah. But anyway. I know mm. people who love it though. I know people who love that movie, but. Yeah, people do you know, talk highly of it. It's just, I tried watching the first one. I wasn't too interested. Um, okay. I have to skip a bunch again because I don't know some of these. I'm down to 44. So if you want to go in between there, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> uh, no, go ahead. 44. I hate this movie. <laughs> I've not I, seen it. So please tell us about it. I hate it so much. It's called Monsters. Uh, and people spent a lot of time talking about how wonderful it is. And it is so annoying. It suffers from the problem of having the worst characters ever. And fun fact, uh, it's by the guy who gave us the shitty Godzilla movie. Um, oh, wow. Which had annoying characters. So Wait, apparently which, that's which a shitty thing. Godzilla movie? The, the most recent Math one where... Oh, is it the Matthew Broderick one or the no, no, no. Oh, no, that's... from Breaking Bad? Yeah, the, yeah that where we only see him for a minute, and then it's like, Godzilla, let's shut the door. Don't watch him actually do anything interesting. It's like, hey, let's follow the soldier around. It's like, I don't care about him. Like, and that's That was a missed. pretty awful movie. Right, and it's just like the monsters when you saw them, it was just so dumb. Like, it's not scary. It's not interesting. They, they can't say here, you need to take it for what is a realistic story about what it might be like for two average people to be thrust into a challenging scenario. I just... I hope the average person isn't that annoying. <laughs> that's my hope. But I feel like, I feel like if that's like what you, like your like caveat, like, well, take it for what it is. I was like, isn't every horror movie though kind of like trying to decide, like show you like what would it be if you were just thrown into this horrific situation? I mean, it's yeah. not like every horror movie. I, I feel like you can't like justify it. Like, well, don't read too much into it because. Right. It's, it's like, like that's every funny. horror movie. Yeah, exactly. And that's why you normally have protagonists who are like, you know, 
average everyday people because otherwise you yeah. cut off a huge amount of your audience that's supposed to be feeding into it and like being able to place themselves within these situations and this movie i just i wanted the main guy like i think he was supposed to be likable and i hated him <laughs> i hated him so hard so that one's awful so um skip that one okay skip the shit out of that um I have not seen Wolf Cop, but that sounds amazing. It sounds pretty amazing. I I mean... <laughs> if anyone has seen Wolf, Wolf Cop and so. you're listening to this, tell us what Wolf Cop is like. Yes. I, uh, I definitely, just the name alone and the poster art. And apparently yeah. it sounds like this would be like a bad 80s movie or 70s. Mm. It's 2014, so this is new. <laughs> this is new. So it's it should be amazing. <laughs> Maybe it'll be like... Um, yeah. Oh God, I can't think of the name of it. The co- the one from Sw- from Sweden. Uh, Ninja, which one? Ninja Cop. Oh, the viral uh, one. Oh, I, I forget what I it's called. I don't think I've heard of this. I'm gonna edit it out. No, it's the thing where there's like the <laughs> Triceratops cop who's his partner, and like it's Hitler has come back with a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, that sounds amazing. What but I've called? never heard of this. <laughs> It's like Ninja Cop or something. Oh, shit. I can't remember. I'm going to have to edit this whole thing out. It's fine. <laughs> but anyway. Um, but yes, get, I want to see that. I've never seen Cujo. I, uh, Sorry, I have seen Cujo, but like I feel like a really long time ago. I feel like the only part that I remember is like the iconic end scene where they're <laughs> trapped in the car and Cujo's... The one uh, they show everyone, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's one of those movies where... I just, uh, I don't, I don't like animal movies where, like, you know, like, they do bad things to dogs. I know. Um, the animals and I mean, should always live. Well, and then the thing with, like, Cujo, too, like, I don't know. I just, I guess I also don't find it scary because I don't find dogs scary. Like, even vicious yeah. dogs. I just, I feel like I have way too much of, like, a like soft spot like I want to save them so like yeah. the whole premise of like you know he's got rabies and goes crazy like that to me is just sad I don't I just don't feel like yeah. that's just, yeah like a horror thing like I don't know so I've seen I've seen it you know it's not one of my favorites I don't really like to watch it so is that um, a good placement for it I mean it is a classic so I won't uh I'm not going to disagree with its pla- like placement the on the list. <laughs> yeah I mean like I get it this is an example of like I understand why this is a classic and people love it, even though it's not my jam. Yeah. So I don't begrudge them like putting it on on this list. I mean, it totally makes sense. I think you know it's mid mid range on the list. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, but quick shout out to the one above it, number forty one. Yeah, sorry, I scrolled right past it, and I shouldn't. Have. I liked Dead Snow. I remember when that first came out, and I was very excited about it. And they showed it at the music box, um, and it was fun. It's just a fun. It, you know, it's a Nazi zombies <laughs> that come back i mean it's um you know it's it's along the lines of um you know anything with the nazi zombies i think it's just funny uh <laughs> you know whether they're in uh like the haunted world of el super pisto the rob zombie movie uh <laughs> the what's the name of the movie the with the nazis that live on the dark side of the moon uh, <laughs> oh, it's great! It's a hilarious film, but I don't I know. Seen I just this one either. I should. I mean, as, as like horrible as as Nazis and the Holocaust is, and I'm really yeah. big into World War II history. There's just something about like that the absurdity of mixing something so terrible yeah. with something so campy and stupid, and then they go around and kill all these Nazis. Like that's. Well, it's kind, kind of, of a like neutralizing satisfied. thing, yeah, because it, it helps. It's a yeah. horrible thing, but it, it helps to put it in a ridiculous setting that you can laugh at, you know? It's just yeah, kind of one exactly. of those things. It's like they get their comeuppance, and it makes it funny, so. Yeah. Um, so, yes, Dead Snow, highly recommend. Have not seen the sequel, which is also on this list. I think it was a little higher up. Um, yeah, but definitely. Like 59 or something. In the 50s, yeah. But, no, Dead Snow, check it out. Uh... Uh, Sleepy Hollow is 39. Um, I like calling I that one it. Sleepy. A uh, Sleepy Hollow for dummies. Because every five well, minutes he explains what just happened. <laughs> yes. It's not, it's, as far as Tim Burton movies go, it is certainly not his strongest or best. 
Johnny Depp plays every Johnny Depp character that he's ever played, all rolled into one. Um, <laughs> Christina Ricci has I, a truly appalling, like, weirdly British accent, sort of. It, yes. Um, for all of its faults, though, I, I really enjoy Sleepy Hollow. It's I, still maybe, fun. It might come to from the, the fact that, you know, the legend of Sleepy Hollow and the Headless Horseman mm-hmm. was my absolute favorite Halloween story growing yeah. up. That's you know, only like eighty it, pages. Everyone should read it. It's so short. Yeah, and and like the the you know the Disney animated classic. Yeah, you know I have it on DVD. I watched that all the time as a kid. Um, and we had this like old school headless horseman Halloween decoration in our house. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like the old cardboard like art. Oh yeah. Like tape up on your cabinets. <laughs> we had a headless horseman one, and it was my favorite thing. So, I think more than anything, this is just a. Uh, it reminds me of childhood and and how much i love this legend yeah um it's on my my list to uh to to watch um and make my boyfriend watch uh who he doesn't watch a lot of horror so i'm trying to introduce him <laughs> to good horror movies and he didn't even know the legend of sleepy hollow he didn't, like what? didn't know yeah i know he no. like didn't know he'd heard of the headless horseman but he didn't Gosh. know like what the story is and i was like oh my god we're first watching the disney movie you and then we're watching down it. and have a conversation <laughs> Yeah. It's lecture time. So, no, so I, I was like, oh, this is so perfect. They put it on Netflix, so it's easy to watch. So, And honestly, like, I am not a Tim Burton fan. We know this. But I think this mm-hmm. actually is a good blend of just, like, insane nonsense that it's fun. Because you're just like, this yeah. is crazy. Like, I am watching Insanity right now. But it's it's a good time because of it. And, and, Miranda and Richardson like kills it as the bad lady oh she's i mean <laughs> she's, she's so good in everything yeah she, she can't do anything wrong uh and there's just there's so it's such a who's who too of like i feel like everyone in this movie is a like a real famous actor like even brahm you know is caster van diem from starship <laughs> troopers which is like the only other real legit movie that he did i think and christopher walken uh christopher walken who's uncredited in the movie like and michael he's not campen even, right Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, um, so like a whole also, bunch of people. A lot, a lot of Harry Potter people are it's in this movie. A lot of Harry Potter people are in this movie. Um, yeah, it's just, it's good. I, I don't know. I would, I would even just because of its campy, nostalgic fun, I would put it personally high, like higher on the list yes. uh, for me. But, and it's great too, because when you think of Tim Burton movies, it doesn't follow all of the, like, Tim Burton, like, black and white spiral yeah no know, it's, it's much more the, general the costuming kind of. is yeah it's not it's not his normal in fact i think if i like didn't know it was a tim burton film you might not know that it was tim burton yeah uh directing it so i agree uh, yeah sleepy hollow definitely and then we have uh, two of your guy yeah i mean of course i would put these up higher on the list uh <laughs> number 38 on this list is nightbreed um and then number 37 is hellbound which is the hellraiser 2 sequel uh nightbreed and i'm not just saying this because i'm biased obviously for for listeners who don't Miranda know really what. loves <laughs> Clark Parker. she's met him yeah i mean i'm yes and i'm actually sitting underneath like at my desk i have a huge uh oil painting by clive barker of pinhead it's signed and personalized to me. So when I say that I love Clive Barker, that's an understatement. Um, so yes, I'm very biased. But the reason why I think Nightbreed doesn't get uh, the credit that it's due, um, and I think a lot of Clive Barker novels and movies are like this because it's, to, to me, such intelligent horror. They're not mm-hmm. slashers. Even Hellraiser, I think people have this misconception that Hellraiser is a slasher movie if you've never seen it you might just know the character Pinhead and think that he's in the same uh, genre of like, like Freddy, Freddy and Jason and Michael Myers. Um, but it's not. And the thing with Nightbreed, uh, it, the problem was is that when it came out, uh, they tried the film studio, first of all, chopped it up and edited it to something almost unrecognizable from the original vision. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, they've tried to market it as a slasher movie. Um, and it's, it's not, it's not even remotely a slasher movie. Um, 
And so I think why sometimes it doesn't get the credit it's due is just because no one really got it. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's hard to even say that it's horror. It is horror, but it's almost more of like a fairy tale. Um, Cause you have this, the city where all these monsters live, almost kind of like a demented Oz. Um, and it's about, you know, this one guy's journey and transformation and, and belonging in this community. And the real villains in the movie aren't the monsters, it's the humans. And it's, all, you know, kind of a persecution and it's great. So if you have not seen Nightbreed, like, please watch it now. It's amazing that it's on Netflix. And I think even the, the version on Netflix is the director's cut. That I was going to ask, yeah. A couple of years ago. I think it is the extended director's cut um, and not the theatrical release. Um, which adds a, a lot to it. So uh, that's my spiel on Nightbreed. Please watch it. <laughs> uh, as far as Hellbound, um, sequel to Hellraiser uh, was not directed by Clive Barker, but he did heavily produce it. Um, it, you know, people consider it also the, you know, one of the the canon movies of the Hellraiser mythos. Um, How many did he direct it, you know, for those? He just directed the first one. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Clyde Barker only directed the first Hellraiser. He obviously also wrote the scripts and the yeah. novel of which it's based. Um, and uh, he was, like, the main producer on Hellbound. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the next to Hell on Earth, which is not on the list. I can't imagine why. It's amazing. Uh, and then Bloodlines, uh, he also produced those and had a, you know, big hand in, this, in the direction of it. And then okay. from there, he doesn't really, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Hellbound, so 37 on the list, that's fair. You know, mm -hmm. most people don't consider it's the classic classic, like the first one. Um, but it's great. It's, uh, it really feels like a real sequel. It's a sequel done well. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not hokey. It, it actually did move the real story along. Um, so yeah, definitely. If you're a Hellraiser fan, you haven't seen the second one, you need to see the second one. Yeah, and I think the number 36, The Taking of Deborah Logan, also has a good spot on here. Have you seen that one? I haven't, but you know, you've t spoken about it. Um, yeah. And I just, I from like the, this is terrible, just based on like the cover art, I just assumed it was one of those like demon possession movies, which mm -hmm. I know are your thing more than they're my yeah. thing. Oh, I love possession. Um, so, <laughs> I know. You're, Mary's big into the like demonic possession and I'm big into like the torture porn genre. Yeah. Um, so I typically watch all of those and then she watches all of the possession ones. And then um, we're so covered. I have not seen this one. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely talk about this one because uh, you have said good things about it and I actually, I should watch it. I don't know why I haven't. Yeah, and I think I, I largely agree with uh, his description of it. I think he's got a great point because it does, like, the ending gets a little bit where you're like, what? Because throughout the entire movie, it's actually kind of, it's it seems like, you know, a possession movie, just plain whatever. But it actually is saying a lot of stuff about Alzheimer's. And the mm -hmm. idea of comparing this concept of possession to when, you know, these diseases that we're seeing people succumb to where you lose your own mind essentially and you're completely a different person and it is like you become possessed you don't have control over the fact that you don't remember anymore that you mm -hmm. don't know who people are you don't know who you are and it's just I thought it was actually and the acting is good like the woman who plays Deborah Logan is so good and it's just like you know it of course it does wind up kind of adhering to horror conventions but there's enough in there where it's just like I think it, it brings up an interesting point which I think is what some of the most interesting horror does when you watch it and you're just like, eh, this is kind of making me think about something other than just, wow, that was creepy. Like, cause the yeah. whole concept of it was very good. It does have like the ending does get a bit like, mm, like traditional. So I, it makes sense for it to be further down on the list. But I think the fact that he pulled it at all is really great. And I think that, yeah, 36 is a great number for it. Yeah. I, uh, I lo love horror and I think most really good horror is like that where it it has a deeper like political or you know social yeah and it you know even does better with uh, presenting like those sort of uh, ideas and topics than say just like a regular movie you know what I mean yeah like, so 
Yeah, uh, it's prime placed to play off of anxiety and it can mm -hmm. like blow it entirely out of proportion in order to be able to examine the particular elements of it that we all kind of universally feel. So that makes it really interesting too. Yeah. So uh, I and like it does that say, one. It does say here that it is leaving Netflix on October, October 24th, which means yeah. I need to watch it soon. Um, <laughs> and everyone else out there, watch it before it's gone. And then I need to edit this podcast before October 24th. <laughs> Okay, so moving right along. Do you like From Dusk Till Dawn? That's 35. You know, I have not seen all of it, which I know is probably shocking to a lot of people. Um, <laughs> it, I've, I've seen the first half, and I've seen other parts here and there. Mm -hmm. um, Robert Rodriguez is really hit or miss for me. Mm -hmm. um, it, so, and so is Quentin Tarantino. Uh, so it's not that I like don't like his films, but they're not yes. they're not always that uh, uh, like I don't think they're as amazing as I think other people do. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, I haven't seen it like start to finish all the way through. And I think it was one of those things when I started watching it, like it I wasn't that intrigued, so I didn't really get into it, which was yeah. probably why I didn't finish it. Um, ha have you seen it all the way through? Yeah, when because uh, Brian and I went through um, kind of a Quentin Tarantino binge because he's only written and made so many movies. He didn't direct. He didn't direct it. Uh, Robert, Richard Rodriguez. And Richard Rodriguez. Robert Rodriguez. I know names. Um, did <laughs> but Tarantino uh, wrote it. So it's like we went through and watched it. It was interesting. I mean, it's an early one. I much prefer other films but I think it was it, it gets so insane <laughs> like what is happening but I think yeah. it's an interesting one this is another one where it's probably good I would say even a little bit lower in the list or I suppose higher mm -hmm. more towards the 60s but it's it's good that it's in there yeah um I, I know, know it's yeah. not on the list oh go ahead oh no I was gonna move on go ahead oh I was gonna say you know it's not on the list because it's obviously not on Netflix um but I really like Planet Terror, you know, if we're talking about like Robert oh, yeah. Rodriguez films, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was a fan of Planet Terror, um, and yeah, I liked Death Proof too. If we're talking about the whole Grindhouse, uh, you know, feature, you know, yeah. as uh, as a as a duel, um, what I just think is really funny about Rodriguez, you know, he's he's known for, uh, you know, making like these really weird, bloody horror action movies, but then let's also not forget like this is the spy kids guy too so <laughs> it's just like you know and the, and i don't know there are some layers any of the spy kid movies um or like uh he also did shark boy and lava girl um <laughs> and i won't say they're bad movies because they're kids movies right so like i have yeah. to look at it under a different lens but it's just so funny to me that like the same guy that made like planet terror where you know they get like the zombie disease and like they're they're testicles like enlarge and explode uh is like the same kind of guy that makes like spy kid which is odd so um you know i do like some of his movies but anyway um yeah it's that there could be a whole discussion on those guys um but i know and I know we're getting kind of long, so maybe we should do like half and half. So we'll do like the, fir the bottom 30 and then do the, uh, the top 30 another day. Um, yes. I know you disagree with number 34, that you think it should be higher. I do. Okay. And this is a new one. So I have a feeling that most uh, listeners have probably not seen number 34 on this list is uh, called The Invitation. Mm -hmm. I just saw it very recently myself at uh the music box uh they had it uh in chicago yes uh here in chicago um and it, the reason that we went to go uh see it is uh my boyfriend had heard on like npr uh an interview with the i think the director or one mm -hmm. of the, the actors in it and he thought it sounded really interesting um what i think is I guess the inclusion on this list is it's definitely a horror film, but more of like a psychological thriller. Mm -hmm. And I guess they go hand in hand. So if you're expecting like a, 
traditional horror, you know, Friday the 13th or any of the other movies we've talked about, you know, so far. Yeah. It's not that, um, but it was really well done. It had, uh, I love movies that can cause this level of like tension and anxiety in the viewer mm-hmm. where like you just don't know what's happening and you start questioning and second guessing you know, you go in thinking one thing and then halfway through you're like, oh, maybe it's not this. And then like something <laughs> else happens and you're like, well, maybe it is this. So I don't, I, I really actually don't want to say too much about this one because it is so new. So I suspect many people haven't seen it. Like some of the yeah. other ones, like, you know, Children of the Corn, whatever. We can give spoilers <laughs> on that. Everyone. If you haven't Children seen Corn, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, you're If you haven't seen that by now, it's like, come yeah. on. But no, the invitation, um, yeah, I really don't want to say too much about it other than it was fantastic it's weird uh it's creepy and it's not what you think it's gonna be um so it just came to netflix like this month i don't know how long it's gonna be there but like please go and watch it it won a lot of like film awards too at uh a lot of film festivals so it's uh it's definitely quality um and the only reason why i think it's more middle of the list is i just don't think it's had time to catch on but i have a feeling that like five, 10 years from now, hopefully this will be a movie that's considered like a real classic, like psychological horror movie. So. Cool. Maybe I'll have to watch that one. <laughs> I have to watch all the dinner party death movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, okay. I have nothing to say about the horde or John dies at the end. Although I've heard John dies at the end is good and I've just, I've never seen it. Yeah. I've heard good things about it as well. I just, I think it's even like recommended to me regularly on Netflix. I will say The Hallow is in my list of movies I've seen. <laughs> I don't remember it. <laughs> well, then that means it must be really good. <laughs> it must be great. Um, I feel like I should remember because Bruce Bolton is in it from Game of Thrones. And I kind of <laughs> love him, but I just don't, I don't remember it. <laughs> I guess it was good. This guy seems to think so. Um, <laughs> but I do have a complaint with number 30, which I guess is where we should probably stop, which is, I think that Vincent Price is the fly should be much higher. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I, I think people, it gets, um, overshadowed by the Jeff Goldblum, uh, fly. Which is I think so disturbing. only because, <laughs> you know, it's Cronenberg, uh, which is, you know, it's Cronenberg, like really, he's great. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just more recent, so I think, like, our generation and stuff knows that version a little better, but, yeah. I mean, it's... But this one's it's so, price, so I mean, good. On. <laughs> it's really good, and it actually isn't, like, it, it's got a good sense of pacing. It has a good sense of shock. Like, when he walks out with the giant, like, fly head, you're just like, ah, that's yeah. weird. <laughs> you know, like, it's a surprise. And it's, you know, it, it does kind of maintain a little bit of a sense of humor, and it's just, like... I think it's really, and of course, I love Vincent Price. I mean, he's been in some crazy nonsense, but I love Vincent yeah. Price. <laughs> and I think The Fly is an excellent movie. Yeah, I would definitely agree that, I mean, it's by no means, I mean, it's right in the middle of this list, but mm-hmm. I could definitely see that um, as, as being much, like, in the lower numbers, like it should be. Yeah, like, like at the, the better better end of the spectrum. So right, which uh, is the uh, spectrum we'll probably get to next time because <laughs> we've been going yeah. for a while. <laughs> All right, so should we cut it there with thirty, and then next I think time that's, that's probably a good a good stopping point. Yeah, and the next time finish off the list. We'll get into the big um, ones, <laughs> which there are some ones in there. Like mostly we've we've talked about movies that we mostly liked. Yeah. Uh, but then there are there are uh, some in the one through thirty uh, or thirty, counting down to one, that we definitely disagree with. <laughs> yes, very much so. One in particular, which we'll get to, and then no one will ever listen to us talk again because they'll be so angry. Because <laughs> everyone will disagree with us. Everyone will disagree, disagree, and you and I will just be like, "Nope, dying on this hill, not moving an inch." Um, <laughs> All right, so join us next time when we ruin everyone's hopes and dreams by talking about how much we don't like this one movie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks, Miranda. Thank you. I always love talking about horror movies. It's the best. Uh, 
<laughs> in general. So yeah. All right. We'll say goodbye for now. So bye. Bye.